हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर ओके और फर्स्ट ऑल हैप्पी गांधी जयंती आई गेस लॉन्ग वीकेंड इज ओवर नाउ सो ओके इन दिस सेशन विल uh take some data and do uh, so, so this this pptt i took it from here with okay, supplementary content and in week 1 if you if you go there you see this uh, mlp week lecture 1 to 5 so, so this explains how uh, end to end machine learning project goes on and uh, this is how we are like supposed to make a project in machine learning so we'll follow all the steps given in this like these are the steps look at the big picture get the data points and uh, this is the uh, this we'll try to look so not all the steps are required uh, like looking at look at the big picture this these things are done in the company when you know before even they capture the data they want to solve something then they go and go out and search for the data how to solve this kind of problem but for our case like we have the data and uh, we know what are what we want to solve but still like we can look uh, what uh, data is representing yeah. okay uh, we want to discover and visualize the data to gain insight like yeah, this is what they they do so we have already discovered it we have the data set we are going to visualize few things about the data which we call exploratory data analysis which is very important like uh, building a model is not that complicated using sql right you just need to write two three lines of code and you'll get a model but uh, to make a sense of the data that what data wants to talk about like what is what is data representing you need to gain something in, some insights from the data you require to do eda okay so uh, so in eda uh, while doing the eda we also do this prepare the data for machine learning algorithm so preparing data is important right uh, preparing means uh, if we see null values in the data set you we remove that if we see categorical columns uh, and all we want to uh, change it to numericals right uh, so strings value if something like that is there we convert that to numbers 0 1 2 3 like that or in other way like ordinal encoder one hot encoder we use that kind of thing. sir i want to ask one doubt here sir yeah uh sir in the video lectures uh, these things were explained that uh, to remove null values use this function to do this use that function but none uh, nowhere they were demonstrated sir nowhere uh, so it was demonstrated sir, in week 1 yes sir uh but in week 2 they did right uh i have not uh, started week 2 sir okay yeah no worries so this was this session is for week 2 so in week 2 they demonstrated it okay uh, sir do we need to remember all these functions for the um uh yes so, so see if you are able to complete this uh process step by step like process all the processes then it's okay right uh, you need to remember the things which are required to complete this step okay sir <clears throat> okay and little bit of exploratory data analysis also you need to learn so like this see uh, like uh, if i if i tell you uh, how a machine learning works right so usually machine learning is statistics right we apply this statistics in just uh, like very good manner and like we 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 had statistics earlier then we come up with models like we we built some models using the statistical methods right we call them like ml models for for this we call them ml models right so basically most of the things is statistics uh, 80 90% is statistics if you if you look at the machine learning models so you should 
know how to do statistics from a data right you, if you got if you get the data you should you should be able to make some statistical inferences right you have learned like descriptive statistics inference statistics like right? right descriptive and inferences so descriptive and descriptive what we usually do is uh, uh, we take mean we describe the data like mean median um, or something like this these are descriptive but when we want to get the inferences out of it right that that means like the sample is representing some population then we make that if our sample is behaving this way then uh, likely like this in this confidence uh 95 percent confidently i can say that population is going to behave in similar way and something like that right so we do some hypothesis testing and uh, something like this in inferences while we make inferences about it right and we 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 say that there is some uh, there is some confidence interval i have so see this is not important for this course but uh, ideally like this is the end goal of machine learning this is the way right because you learned all all of the things which are required uh, for this course uh, this course is just practical impl implementation of what you learned like there is nothing new going to come up except uh, EDA, maybe EDA you haven't done it. Uh, though you have done it uh, using uh, you know uh, pen and paper, like you you have done it. Like uh, when to plot box plot, uh, when to plot bar chart. You you know it right. Uh, somewhere you have done it. Uh, even though if you have, haven't done in the course, you've done it in somewhere. Like it it's been taught in maybe you know 11, 12th standard, something like that. So. Uh, so, so like you know statistics you know python right uh, you have learned mlt also which uh, which explains most of the machine learning models so so like this course is nothing new this course is just a practical implementation of all, all of this like uh, how uh, you know you should do these things in in code like how it looks in code right so uh, when you go and like a degree or somewhere uh, degree like our degree bs uh, so currently this diploma right, degree there is some dl course will come uh, deep learning uh, so what happens is usually in deep learning uh, they teach models and everything but but there is no most of the things is there is no practical implementation of it because teaching practical implementation is not easy uh, there are many many variation of it thought processes changes like like why should you follow a particular method? There is no method. This is just a wireframe. Like what what we are giving you is wireframe that you should do this, and you can of course bend it, mend it, whatever you can, whatever you like, you can do it. But in the end, your model should be a good one, and you should explain why your model is behaving this way. Uh, in in machine learning, at least not in deep learning, but in machine learning, you should able to explain some some amount of things about data it's uh, it's more than enough okay so so this course is like wireframe of all of this how how to you know put all together all of these things and make a model out of it so i guess this is uh, this is that yeah we'll we'll do all of this like uh, preparing prepare the data set this is the this is the most important part of this course like prepare the data set for machine learning algorithm you you should know how to prepare the data set because building a model is not a is not a big task like it's three line of code that's all okay i i will show you like uh, so so let's say uh, if i you know import from sklearn or or just forget about sklearn like we have some some sample data like whenever you run the collab you will you will get the sample data right so so let's say if i copy path if i do pd dot with csv right so so let's say this is the data i got and uh, th so this is my target label right i call this as df let's say df I 
I imported from here. Like for everybody, it will be there. So like, uh, don't worry about it. Like where where this data came from? Uh, it's being for everyone. It's just sample data given by Colab. So, so it, it is on the drive, sir. Yeah, it is for everyone. It's on not not on drive, but Colab will give you this all. Okay, okay, it's sample. Okay, yeah, sample data. Yes, yes. So uh, I'll just take access, let's say df uh, dot drop, and I want to drop this. Y is equal to df dot. And there is one more thing we do uh, that is train test print. So I, I, I'm just briefing it. We'll we'll come again here again. Like what, what what I mean by building a model is why why it's easy, right? Okay. Model selection. Uh, sir, I actually had one question here. Yes, yes. Uh, so when you use this drop method, yes. Uh, so does it automatically create a copy? Or are you using the same data, just dropping on axis? So no, no, I'm not using same data. Same, my data is DF. Okay, from DF, I dropped something and I stored. Okay, okay. In X, in okay, X so, so it's a copy, like copy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a copy. If I if you don't see equal to sign uh, in the in in the code anywhere, uh, that means. Uh, I didn't copy it from earlier, like like it just showcasing you that this is gonna happen, okay? And I haven't stored anywhere, and so so the original data frame I'm I'm going to use it. And, and it means that I, I just took some inferences of that data. I run the code. I saw it. This is how it's gonna happen. And uh, if I use that and stored it somewhere, that means that I'm using copy of it. If not, then. Okay. Not using okay, and, and if you see in place equal to true, then you will see in place equal to true. Okay, this also means that I'm changing the original data frame. If I write in place equal to true, then my DF will will change to uh, X, like uh, how X looks like now. Uh, DF will change it to that. By default, it is false. Yeah, by default, it's false. Okay. So, so let me do this train test flat. So in train test flat, x comma y will give some test size. Okay, test size is zero point. Sir, meaning of in place. Meaning of in place. Uh, okay. So, so let's say if I. This is the function, right? If I if I write this. You'll see, uh, I dropped uh, median house. This median house value got dropped uh, from the df dot house. Uh, this is how my data set set will look like if I do this. Uh, if I if I apply this function, okay. If I if I apply this drop function, this is how my data set is going to it look. It will like. drop the column. It will drop the column. Yeah, I dropped it, but I I haven't uh, you know saved it. Like I, I what I'm doing is like it's currently. Uh, uh, showing you that this is how it's going to be, but I haven't stored it. Like my work is not saved. You can say, right? Saved. So, so if I want to save my work, let that I want to drop this. Okay. I will. What I will do is I will. I will write. I will write in place equal true. So if, if I write that. If I if I write this, uh, my work is saved. Okay. But the but the problem is my data my DF uh, will not have uh, this median uh, median house value. It will get removed from that. So if I if, Sorry, I, show if I write DF equal to DF dot drop. 
then also same thing will happen na no? yeah same thing will happen correct so so if, let me let me do this so so if i do this now if i so df dot head i i lost uh, this median house value uh, that got dropped but uh, if i do this the problem is uh, to why i'm giving that uh, from df to why i'm saying that go to df and uh, if you see a median house value column there uh, copy it right that's what i'm telling to why but then uh, now there is no median house value column available that's why i'm not doing in plus equal true here okay okay sir. so uh, sir, is it same as uh, as frame is equal to true as frame is equal to true no 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 as frame is different thing it's like uh, uh, i'm not sure but but it, it's it does it means somewhere else like i have never i've never used it um, in the same line can we take x y and uh, then return x y is equal to true and as frame is equal to true then i think it will be okay okay so so if you write as frame from uh, if you if you use some sklearn dataset module right sklearn dot dataset from that if you get something yes, yes, sir. if you write as frame as frame is indicating that uh, import this data as a num as a pandas okay as a pandas data frame as frame will indicate that import as pandas data frame Uh, this sort of means. This is different, sir. Oh, so if if I if I set it as let's say as frame equal to uh, true, right? True. So by default it's false. Then if it's false, then you will get numpy array. Numpy array you will get, and uh, you know right? Uh, if it's a numpy array, then uh, this data frame which which it uh, which currently on the screen. Uh, the data will not look like that it will be in array like uh, brackets will be there and array in array format it will look like okay. uh, so where was i so currently yeah i will going to keep this so I, I will again rerun this because my because my df got changed up, right so now i have x and y train to split i'm doing so right x train x test y train and y test or validation also works i think like validation So let's say if I want to make a linear regression model, then I will write from Escalon dot uh, linear models. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you quickly show that uh, uh, how to go? Can you go to the Escalon uh, documentation and how to check all this? Um, uh, check what? How to write this uh, line of code from the Escalon documentation? This, this one. Uh, whatever this model selection and import uh, ten test split. So uh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. please go to the SQL. Okay, so if I am at SQL, okay. Because it's a regular habit we need to implement. Okay. So so you are saying that model selection. No? Okay. If uh, that I should go to model. Yeah, so okay. directly you can Google. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, In model selection, train test split. You can write directly on the Google. Let's go then. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, but uh, okay. So I am currently importing this library. Uh, this 
for this method yes I split uh, method in my uh, this collab using this code from escalon uh, yes. selection so how, how to do that uh, they have given example also like from escalon dot model seven import yeah, the example is fine i uh, used to do it also from the examples only yeah but from but they have they used to mention these standard parameters and returns yeah okay, okay. Uh, so 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 whenever you come up with come up to this escalon you will see this parameters returns yeah and uh, one more thing you will see uh, yes. maybe in models uh, if, if i let's say go linear regression okay. then attributes you will see yes attributes yes. Uh, yes. okay so so these parameters are something uh, we we set while uh, doing the fit like before fitting we set this thing like it's a like manual task okay attributes are what uh, attributes are the things which will get out of the model like uh, if you train up so like when you write this from sql and import uh, um, uh, whatever the, the the library from uh, of the sql and which we want to import okay so, so th that piece of code is uh, could could be written from this documentation also no in the top part in the in the from the very top is this one yes yes yeah you can write uh, actually if you if you write this because whenever we see it is written in the form of like sql and dot dot something and dot something yeah so so what happens is let's say if i write import this okay. yes yes uh, yeah uh, it doesn't run like it yes that's what i want old mesql and model regression okay uh why why it doesn't so where it, where could we find it correct one to uh like we, we we can always not got problem for this uh so, so actually what happens is uh, see this uh this importing right we can yeah. import libraries like like i imported sklearn like i can import pandas also okay but so in panda it doesn't i don't face any problem yeah so but, but in sql and uh, we need to check always we need to check the examples and then we copy from there and write the piece of code yeah see uh, from sql and okay see uh, if you can write from because i imported sql and here uh, in this line right yeah yes if i write from sql and import linear model this will also work Okay. But now uh, the problem is. So why do these SQL and people write uh, with that uh, piece of code in the top of the? Uh, why? Wh that, what is the significance of that? Can you please go to that SQL and? Okay, okay. Tab? So. Uh, yes. What is the significance of this? Top okay. Code? Okay. I, I I get it. I got the point. So the thing is, first thing is library, right? Yes. Uh, we we import SQL like like library we we import it okay we import this then there are like modules in it yes so we have like uh, this linear model linear model is a module then we have a pre processing. Uh, we have uh, linear uh, model selection, right? Model what selection. is pre-processing in that? It's a, it's a module. We will come there. Like okay. it's a module name. Okay, these are naming. Like uh, I, I imported linear from li linear regression. I imported from linear models, huh. uh, and and train tested. I imported from model selection. So model selection is also a module. Like okay, uh, that's how like uh, it's kind of hierarchical structure. Yeah, pre-processing is also another module. These are okay. different different modules. Yeah, you can say hierarchical, but this is how it is, right? Like inside a folder, you yeah. go, you see another folder, and inside the folder okay, you see okay. file, something like this. Okay. Okay. Then the inside modules, uh, we have methods or functions, uh, whatever you call methods, right? 
okay. usually call them methods. So methods are linear regression. Yes. Then train test split. But then we have like uh, like it's an ordinal encoder is there. Yes. Okay. Uh, ordinal encoder is in pre-processing. Okay. So so these are all methods. So we need to use met. We uh, what we what we really want to use is method, right? So we should give command that bring this method from this module of this library. Yes. Uh, we need to write like from Escalon. Uh, let's say if I import a linear model, that will also work. So my module is imported now, right? I, I imported yes. linear models. Yes. I can see what is there inside a linear model uh, module. Like if, if I write direct, di, DIR is directory. Yes, sir. And I can see uh, linear, linear model. models. Okay. And I can see this all models are there inside my uh, module. OK. And uh, if I want to import something from this, let's say let's say if I uh, import linear regression only, let's say if I want to import this, I can. Uh, so so currently uh, this linear model is already there, right? So I, I can write linear model dot this and it will work. Okay, got it. This will work. Yes. This is object. That's why I, uh, this is a, like class. That's why I need to give brackets and I can make object out of it. It's an object of linear regression. Why did you give the bracket? Because it's a class uh, in Python. This is a Python class, right? Yes. So how uh, if you want to make a more make a object of it, you need you need to give brackets, right? Like, like how we do pandas and all. Yes. Same, same thing, right? Python. So, so what I did is created object, An object. Uh, of linear regression class. Great, sir. Okay. So now we understand from Scalen dot these are all uh, kind of folder under folder. Uh, yes, the folder under. Go so to that website, SQLN. Yeah. Yes, sir. SQLN dot model. So this model, model selection is uh, module name. Module name. Okay. SQLN is a library, and then trend test is method. Okay. Yeah. So if you click on this, you can see uh, various kind of modules, API references. Uh, so, so this is SQLN dot base. This in this base. This is base is the module. Inside this, you will see base dot base estimator. These are like uh, this kind of thing. Probability calibration. So escalon dot calibration, escalon dot cluster is there, right? K means uh, maybe you heard of this. Yes, yes. And uh, all like, the modules are coming up in this. Yeah, escalon dot covariance and cross decomposition. From cro cross decomposition, you want let's say CCA. Uh, like these are I guess advanced concepts. Got it, sir. Uh, if I show you this as ensemble uh, ensemble methods, right? From Escalon, import uh, Escalon dot ensemble. You can get ensemble like this Ada Boost, yes, uh, right? Random forest. This all you will get from ensemble. So, so these are namings. You you need to remember this. Like uh, uh, though in like OPP and all, we give a PDF that uh, which method like which method is where like where is Ada Boost going to be? It's going to be ensemble. Uh, in yes. a PDF, it's written there, but but if you know something, it's it's great. Like uh, yes. few things are very important, like train test plate, and these are like they keep on coming repeatedly tasks. Uh, you will you will be able to remember it also. Uh, yes, practice enough. Okay. Feature extraction, feature selection, this all kind of things are there. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so where was I? This will not work. Okay, I imported this one, right? I think it. So I'll click create object of it. LR. So let's say give name LR. And. I need to do like lr dot fit 
x train comma y train and and that's it like like my model is ready i now i have linear regression model so how much you know how much effort it took me uh, maybe you know very very less like so i i have the data it's cleaned on already like there is no null values all the things are numbers and everything if you have this kind of data then there is no problem to build a model like build model building is a very like easy task like i just imported i just did train test bit okay i i imported this linear regression library and i build a model out of it you can now see lr dot like coefficients and all right so can you scroll down up uh, just a little bit no sir uh, down down Okay, when where you have done x x x train and y train? Where I have done x train this. Thing. Where we splitted the data? Are you um, doing a splitting of the data here only, or it is already yes. given? No? Uh, it's no. Nah, what I created is validation set. Okay. Test data and test data. I guess. Uh, let me see. Then test data median house value is given. Okay, uh, so median house value is given here, so no problem. Like you can use this also as a test set. But usually, usually what we do is we we create uh, three. Again, sir, this uh, uh, the code you have written x train and y uh, where you have splitted the data in validation and uh, train data. Is that you that you have used from that uh, SQL and import. From train train test a split uh, one, na? Yes. So there it should be there in the SQL and library. Yes. How to write it? Okay. Uh, so so like uh, I was saying that building a model is not a difficult task. Uh, it's very easy like if you see see now here here it says that you are importing this that's okay but uh that means you know machine learning technique about it like how a linear regression model is getting built up right how how these things work like uh so uh in in sklearn it, it uses like least square method here for for this one right in this there is no gradient descent uh the gradient descent one comes in sgd regressor uh that is like i guess in b4 uh but but like so so, so the part the thing is uh in this course we don't you know de again again go and explain how least square method works how to make data point calculate so it is so sir method. it is using least least squares it, it should be mentioned in the documentation it's not mentioned, I guess, but uh, yes, sir, it should be I, what I you what you can do is uh, see here linear regression is there, right? You can yes. you can go and see the source code of it. So how the coding works inside, like inside linear regression. Uh, what is there? Like if you can read inside, like these parameters are there. Cell, like this. This is going to be a little tough, but uh, all the documentation is there. You can look into it. But if they are using, sir, uh, say gradient descent, then I think it should be mentioned on that side. Somewhere yeah. else. So the thing is, it's not gradient descent. Gradient descent is uh, in. Yes, sir, here they are using least squares. Yeah. So in gradient descent will be SGD regressor. That is another. Uh, okay. Another uh, method. Like uh, you can see here. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, this one, right? So, select a model and train it is, is not a big task. Building a model is also not not a big task, right? This this process is very easy due to Escalon. We have Escalon. We have other uh, also like PyCaret, something like this. This is the name. Like these are there. 
who can build a model for you very easily. But the task which uh, you know usually uh, requires skills or requires you know, thought process is uh, this prepare the data and uh, like discover and visualize the data. So this visualization uh, to data and gain insights. The insight gaining is something like uh, there is no right and right or wrong in this. You can follow any path, any way uh, to gain the gain insights, any uh, like statistical method or true. I can say that this is not right, and you can say this is this is wrong. But uh, if you follow particular methods, and let's say if you do hypothesis testing, everything, then I guess you are uh, more than enough uh, in the in the zone that you can say that that what you did is correct uh, procedure, right? Uh, uh, then uh, we, we build this linear regression model. Then there's something called fine tune your model. So fine tune means uh, in linear regression there are like no parameters, uh, much parameters like uh, fit intercept or not. But but if you go to let's say if there is any. Yeah. So, so let's say if I go to random forest reg regressor, okay. random forest, how it was built, uh, I hope you know a uh, little bit of it in machine learning techniques, like we select how many you know, trees we want and uh, like criteria is there, squared error episode. So, so these are like parameters. Okay. So what happens is uh, we, by default, these are the parameters, like uh, default is 100 by default. And by default, we'll use squared error criteria. Max depth will be none. So, so like uh, it will build all the all the whole tree. It will build right. So, so, so these are all parameters are there. But uh, we are not sure because this parameter we set it right. We write that this is the parameter are there. Uh, are the best or not? Uh, we are not sure. So, so what we do is we fine tune it. Like we choose certain a set of parameter like we create a array that this all possible parameters are there and we select something uh, which is best from that okay we select like let's say max depth is uh, none right then we can say max depth is like five four three uh, we keep all these values and we do fine tuning the model uh, how we do it uh, it's, it's going to be there so don't worry but we we then we select which is the best parameter it got chosen so this is like a uh, uh, like there is no logic behind it like how why uh, you know why this is the parameter got chosen and not that one i mean like it it went and it computed the results out of uh, uh, using this parameter and that's how it it got the values and based on the values or uh, like R2 score or something like that. Based on scores, it is saying that these parameters are best. So can our EDA and uh, some domain knowledge will have, uh, can uh, estimate some uh, some of these values of these parameters? Uh, I'm I'm not will sure. It, will, will it help or not? Um, I, I Usually, EDA uh, won't help in uh, won't help in uh, parameters like which is going to, but. Uh, you will have the you you will have maybe you will get the idea that what kind of parameter you should keep or which, which you can which you want to discard it like that like okay how many trees you, sh you should keep 100 or 200 or 300 uh, which is going to be better uh, if you have uh, you, you might get the feel of it okay also so, based on our uh, learnings from mlt course like uh, the correct. top three and uh, the like what changes after the we increase the depth? So, so this will be taught further, no? This ensemble method. Yeah, uh, ensemble method is there. It's like in maybe eight week eight. It's uh, like okay. very far away, but okay. it will be taught. But but you should know the ensemble. You know how how it works, right? That that, so that we have learned in the MLT. Yeah, that uh, you can refer back there. But what we will going to show you is uh, how to implement that and. Will uh, covers little bit of that, but not the whole thing, right? Yes, sir. Okay. XGBoost we are not going to cover, no? XGBoost. 
exibust uh, i guess yeah, it's not there exibust is not there okay, okay. so see these are the steps like uh, step one look at the big picture this all things you do and like uh, selection and performance of uh, this thing like uh, list down the various assumption tasks get the data so, so this all task you should do when you get the data right so so let's do the first thing like uh, frame the problem select the performance measure and uh, list and check the assumptions okay uh, before that i uh, before that what kind of data we are going to use is uh, this is the data set link right so if i click on this i it's in there i will share it with you now only I will share it with you now. This is the data set link. If you, uh, if you are here, right? If you click on this, and for me, like, to show up, uh, this will appear in front of you. Uh, you need to download this. Okay, I'll, I'll download this. So, uh, so it, for me, it was already there. Yes. Hello. Okay. Uh, so so it's there. I, I downloaded it. Okay. Just now, see, I downloaded it. Okay. I, I already downloaded it. Uh, so now, now I have this like V5 one only, but for you, there is only one thing, right? V5. Uh, and if I show you, uh, this is where it is. Like, this is the this is the file I downloaded. Now I need to upload it in my collab. So this is where it is, right? I will I'll click on this files. I'll go here. Okay, upload to session storage, and something like this window will appear. I'll I'll click this one and open. I'll, I'll let it load completely because if, if it won't load completely then it will show me the data but not the complete one i'll copy the path of it so i'll, I'll write uh, df equal to the data read. CSV Okay. And PD dot read CSV, this one. If you see uh, how my data, what is my shape of the data set? Like I have 10,000 rows and 12 columns. Okay. Then uh, how my data looks like data dot head. Uh, this is how it looks like date is there, year, locality, estimate value, cell price, property, residual number of room, bathroom, carpet area, protest, and face, right? something like this like which way uh my which way this houses are facing like this let's say this house is uh there in waterbury and uh the estimated like price was this and it sold out at one uh one lakh eighty five thousand uh property was like single family can stay in that detached house so it's not uh, attached to something it's detached right number of rooms are three Number of bathrooms were three in, in that carpet area is like uh, how much you know area is there in the house so it was like around nine in six property tax rate uh, at that time like in 2019 it was this much and it was facing south right so uh, these are like columns uh, 
saying and this is my data and this sell price is i guess we have to predict right we have to model we have to train the model and uh, when we when it got trained we have to predict the sell prices right no so this is not a clean data no? uh no it's not uh, it's not like uh, we can see there are some something like this is also a question mark uh, and of course it's not clean because uh, this locality if you see uh, there are like categorical values right water very bridge but strings are there then property strings are there residual strings are there and face is also like strings okay so it's not clean we have to clean this that is the that is the, i guess task uh, so, if you see, frame the problem, select a performance measure, and list and check the assumptions. Uh, wait. So, if I come here, if I if I say this, like frame the problem, right? So, like I told earlier, that in reality, what we do is we frame the problem then go out and collect the data like we want to predict the housing prices of uh, we want to predict predict housing prices in like certain area some area is there right so i i went to that area and collected this data okay this is like water very bridge port wherever this locality is present i want to predict housing present in that area this is my problem i framed it then i went out i collected the data okay. i collected the data or maybe somebody did it uh, company did it but collected the data right we have the data of it we uh, now we want to uh, uh, we want to predict the housing price, right? That is the problem. We'll select some performance measure. So, uh, see, uh, I know that housing prices is going to be regression kind of problem, right? Because there is no uh, classification whether this house is price is what uh, uh, greater or lower. Uh, this how my question is not like I haven't framed my problem like that. I want to predict housing prices, so. Pricing is like it can be from a range, lower range to upper range. It can be anything in that. Uh, like here, if you see uh, the price one like eighty five thousand, here it is one like fifty thousand. It can be in between something also. Uh, possibility are uh, anything in between, right? So this is how a regression. This is a regression problem. Then regression problem uh, we select if if I if I want to select a performance measure. Usually we co uh, we select R two score, right? There are other like adjusted R two score, right? You, you can you can select anything. Mm, then uh, we have MAE like uh, mean absolute error. Then we have like MSE mean squared error. Something like this. These are our performance metrics measures of uh, regression. Like uh, if I if I build a model how am i going to judge that my model is good or not so i can select any of the let's say let's say we select r2 score okay what you select uh, depends on like uh, uh, in reality it depends on the uh, domain uh, like uh, domain expert okay domain expert will tell you that this is what we want to select and uh, he will tell you that uh, you should go ahead and use this, right? He has the no domain knowledge of it, which which metric is better, he should know it. Like then he will make some other assumptions. He will do other things using this course, right? That's all. So uh, the list and check the assumptions. So there are a few assumptions. If I, if I choose a linear regression, right? Then if it's a linear regression model, then there are some, some assumptions related to it, like uh, you know, independent and dependent variables should be uh, linearly, uh, linearly dependent, uh, linearly correlated, right? Correlated. It should be correlated. 
something like this like like hetero heteroscadility right so this uh, this kind of things are there so we we make assumptions of this while building the model right so uh, look for it like what are the assumptions of something to be linear regression assumptions for linear regression so I, I'm taking this linear regression assumptions in my mind and I'm going forward. Okay. Uh, so what is input? What is output? Uh, we decided that that cell price is output and input is rest of the columns. Okay. Uh, what is the business of the how does company expect to use and benefit from the model? So it will predict the prices and uh, then mm, whatever, like it will, uh, I don't know, it will give it to some other companies like uh, who who are, you know, in selling business, uh, housing selling business, maybe give it to brokers, uh, they might like it or give it to public also, uh, who wants to buy the houses in this area, right? So, so this are like you can do. Sir, why we are doing that like major performance measure? Like why? Because we are already using Scikit-Learn that provides us an inbuilt model. So uh, it, it doesn't provide us the efficient model. Uh, no, no, no. Like, uh, see, uh, we want to uh, we want to predict something, right? We are going to predict and build a model out of it, right? Uh, let's say. Let's say if I build a, some random model, like I I have no, uh, it's, it's not a linear regression, it's nothing like that. It's just a plain something like multiply two, multiply this row by uh, this column by this column and divide this column, something like that. This like, let's say x2, x2 is like some column, okay? Multiply x4 and minus x7, uh, like this is how my model is. I want to, uh, I want to see right uh, accuracy of it or like how it is performing, and is it able to uh, predict the real uh, real housing prices, or is it even near to that? So that's how that's why we use some performance measure, right? That uh, my model is good or bad. How how would I know? Question okay, we, we will run it on our training data. So if we find that true, then we yeah. Yeah, our training data, then validation data will run on that because in training data, uh, what happens is we we some we did something with training data, right? And uh, we don't know that same thing will happen if I uh, so so this training data will be seen by our model, right? But test data is something which our model haven't seen it earlier. It's a new data for for the yes. for my model. It's a new house pricing in the case of real estate. Yeah, so we check on that also that how it's performing on it's a training data and how it's performing on my uh, new data, test data. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, what is the current solution, if any, like if, if there is any other solution, like see building model is not always a solution. Okay, there are like, uh there might be a problem which can be solved without even making a model right uh, if it's the, if it's there then and you are building model then that's a, like a very uh no not intelligent uh thought because you have spent a lot of lot of money in collecting data uh, i don't know what what else you need to do to make this model and then uh, you realize that uh, you know this problem can be solved without even building a model so, uh, but but here we need to build a model, okay? Because we are learning it. Don't worry. Like, so uh, design consideration in problem framing, right? Is it a supervised, unsupervised, or a uh, RL? RL is like reinforcement learning, right? So uh, we know that this is supervised learning because we have the data. We want to predict something. Hi. Yeah. Sir, uh, I have a question, sir. Yes. 
So uh, this is my first first class. Actually, I'm taking ML, MLP and MLT both at, at this semester. So mm -hmm. I'm not understanding the difference between uh, that validation uh, set and the training data set. Yeah. Uh, uh, give me a minute. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, you were saying that you you don't understand the difference between training and validation. Sir. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, I'll I'll come to that. Uh, so so what is the difference between that? I guess that is the next thing. Uh, if I if if we answer all of this, selection is also there. We did it. Check assumptions. Get data. We got the data. Okay. Check data samples. Data. Okay. No, not uh, that near, but I will explain it to you now. So, so what happens is we have this data, right? We have this data. Like let's say this is my database. Uh, my screen is visible, right? I I shared. Yeah. Yes. So I have my database, right? This is my database. Like, um, let's say it's SQL database. Okay. Uh, it collected data for from let's say day one. This is my day one collected data, and uh, like day two it collected it, and it collected it. Let's say day hundred till day hundred. I mean, and that's like today. Today till today I have the data. Right now, uh, this is today, and this day one zero one is something in future, right? This is future. Day one zero two, uh, day one zero three. This, so this is like future. Uh, this not yet happened. This is today, like this hundred there. I have collected this day one to day hundred data. Now uh, I will use like okay. The question is, will there is going to be any data for day and day one hundred two? Is there any data I uh, I have available for that day one zero two? Uh, no, here from day one to day hundred, that is that can be considered as the test data set. No, that we no, sorry training data set that that we uh, categorize as training divide in training and uh, validation data set. Correct. Right. Yes. That that I understand. And from that uh, day one zero one to onwards, that will be test data set where we apply our model. Yes. So I'm not understanding when we will uh, define, uh, divide the data set uh, from day one to day hundred. One will be a uh, training data set, and one will be validation set. Yes. So, uh, what is actually uh, okay? Okay. Main I, I understood your problem. So, see. Uh, uh, the thing is, we have this. This data is available to us, right? Day one to day hundred, data is available, right? Data available. We have this data. Now, let's say if I train my model for day one, I use whole data, like whole training data, whole uh, available data. Let me write available data. Uh, I use for training. Okay, I use it for training. Uh, now what happens is my model have been like gone through all the data set it learned whatever uh, it wanted to learn okay learned it now uh, it now uh, if you if i give you some accuracy or some some metric like r2 score let's say if i give r2 score of it r2 score of it uh, and it will show let's say uh, something like uh, very high usually it shows high, uh, not every time, but usually. Let's say it shows like 90 to 93%, okay, something like 93%, or, or if I say in this, like 
right? If you see in order to score 0 0.93 or something like this, will comes up. And like uh, you don't have this data available, like day 101 to day 103, right? Uh, where, you, where are you going to test that this is, you know, a correct R to score? You have to wait for this to happen, right? Let's say one day 101 was over. Then you can test on this and you you can come up with R to score or test R to score, right? That my I predicted something for day 101 and then this happened. And now I have R to score for day 101. And that is like I got score of let's say 0 0.89. This this score I got for day 101. Then again, like you have to wait for another day, and you'll see that day 102, you will have. Uh, now you have two maybe you know test data here for uh, this is one zero one one zero two, and you can do uh, you can predict both of them and come up with some uh, some R to score right. So this how not uh, we should uh, you know wait we have to wait for the test data set to gen get generated. So that's why what we do is we create a validation set which is like we consider this as a test set like this is something happened. Already we have the data set, we judge it and we can directly judge it, right? Because we already have the results. Like what happened on the, on, uh, let's say if I choose uh, day one uh, to 70 as my train set, okay, train set. And uh, let's say 71, 200 as, uh, as validation set. I build a model on this, uh, build model on this. Okay. And uh, and I, I can just directly check on this, right? Test uh, or check. Let let me check. Uh, checking on this. I can directly check on this, and I get the R two score directly, right? So so if if something like this is the data I use to train the things. Training is like it will be. It will learn. My model will learn from this, right? Learn from this. Learn from this. But here, I, what I'm doing is implementation. So this is like implementation of my model. Uh, it's not going to learn anything from my test set unless it's like incremental learning. If it's like normal model, it will not learn from this. But I will uh, implement my model uh, using this test set, uh, using this validation set, and I'm going to predict. Uh, I'm going to get some score out of it, right? So if my R2 score is coming out to be a good, a good one for train and validation set, then I, I will, you know, I am like kind of sure, not 100%, but I am kind of sure that in future, when uh, I am going to predict my, so so what I will do is I will predict for 101, 102, 103, I will predict for every day, okay, for uh, many, many days, I will predict it. Uh, and then uh, I'll see when, when the this thing arises, that what, how my data, how my model got, uh, you know, uh, how my model was able to predict. So it's like that. That's why we do this thing. Like we don't have test set. That's why we we created test set from the data we already had. That's why it's a validation set is required. Nothing else. Okay, sir. Thank you. So what I understood, uh, validation data set is kind of dummy test set. Correct. Correct. You can say Where dummy. Yeah, where we apply our uh, already found out model, which we uh, found out from that train training data set. And yes. if the model works well in the validation data set as well, then we consider it as the final model, or we go back and uh, develop another model. Am I correct? Uh, develop another, uh, why On another? The it, it, it's oh, the model. We don't develop another model. We test on that, like we check on that also. No, I mean, if uh, the model, which is good in training data set, but it doesn't hold that much good in validation data set. Yes, yes. So we go back to training data set and de develop another model. Uh, yes, we we try to develop another model, correct. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, now uh, we'll do this uh, get the data which we did 
I I I uploaded my data here. Okay, this is how you are. You need to upload it. Okay, in your collab while doing OPP or uh, if any other tests are there in which data set uploadation is required on uh, model creation is required on based on some data set given. Then this is how you will going to upload it. So I uploaded it. I I now I am what I'm doing is I I have the data. I'm looking for uh, something like. Uh, like check data samples, right? Like, like how it looks like. So data dot head, we did data dot head, and data dot shape will tell me how much, how many rows and columns are there. So like ten thousand rows are there, and twelve columns are there. So, sir, okay. sorry to interrupt, but uh, can I know your sir handle on this discourse? My okay, my is at the rate uh, mn. So right. What is? Right. I I typed in. Uh, Chat. Okay. Yeah, Thank you, sir. I, uh, I'm Manoj. Achha, okay, Manoj, sir. Yes. Got it. Hmm. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I have this like rows and columns, uh, which I got from data dot shape. I can, uh, if I write print row. And okay. Columns is not so spelling. Good. Spelling is it? sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I got rows and columns. So, uh, yeah, ten thousand rows I have. And 12 columns. We can see from the data set also, right? Uh, if I just write data, then uh, I know all the rows will not be, be visible. But uh, you know that 10,000 rows are there, right? So uh, we looked at it. I'll just so so this is the like this is the uh, PDF I'm going to follow, but I will not look into it again and again, okay? Because I I kind of uh, know what to do, but uh, if you don't know what to do, then just follow this PDF. Okay, what you should do, like how get got get data statistic, write that. Okay, how to get data statistic, write dot info data dot info. Then uh, uh, next step is like uh, uh, next step is like they we plotted some um, uh, this graphs right uh, histograms and uh, counts and we make inferences out of like what what a graph means we take out some information from graphs right we do these things so let's do that so now i have data and if i read data.info it will give me some statistics about uh, uh it will give me information about my data so what i know is date is object object is uh, so, so you will see three kind of things in this usually object. Okay. You'll see object. You'll see int. So, so here you will see int 64, but uh, sometimes you'll see int 32, int 16, int 8. That is like uh, the way we define integer, right? If it, if it's an integer 64, that means it, it takes more space than int 32, right? Uh, I hope you know that, that. And third thing you will see float, like float and integer and object. So object is usually uh, when strings are there, and when so, so whenever it's like non number, right? I will say non number non number all the non number things will be written as uh, as uh, object right so so you you can see date is a like uh, date is not a string or uh, or something like this but here it, it will show you that it is a string right uh, and uh, other like other objects are like locality is also object uh, then we have property residential 
and face so this this all are objects right so so these are all and uh, categorical values then uh, what we do is we we try to figure out which is categorical value okay and inside categorical we have two kind of things like nominal and ordinal right so so if it's something like nominal then what we do is we apply one hot encoder Good. but if it's a nomin ordinal then we can apply ordinal encoder so uh okay so what is the difference between like uh this ordinal and one hot encoder is uh let me take an example like uh let's say i have you know uh, uh let's say if i have a uh, size of cups size of cups in let's say coffee shop or something like that right uh you'll see like small then medium and large so these three are there only right so uh at current it like definitely showcase that uh small is going to be uh like smaller than medium right uh there is some order in this right uh if like even without anybody telling me i would guess that large cup of coffee will cost more than the small cup of coffee uh same same coffee right let's say if it's a cappuccino or uh, you know just coffee let's say right like that cap uh, I, I don't know the spelling of it it's very complicated but just think that this is a spelling okay and so i know that small cappuccino is going to be a uh, cost lesser than the large cappuccino right so th so there is some order in it but what if uh, we don't have any order like nominal values are there so what are nominal values uh, nominal values can be uh, okay the type of transport there's a type of transport uh, you you choose for going office or something like uh, transport for going to the office okay uh, uh let's say you can use cycles uh, bike okay bike is there car is there bus is there right bus train metro bus metro something right so i mean like i'm not able to make any uh any relevance of it like there is no order in it uh like like i'm not sure like uh, like uh, if i'm going to able to i'm going i'm going to able to reach my office early with let's say car or metro i'm not sure like maybe metro will take me there faster than the car or bus or maybe you know cycle will take me to the office faster so i'm, I'm not sure what is order like there is no order unless unless being told right unless being told that there is an order in it uh, i will consider it as nominal kind of value so uh, if i uh, you know convert my uh, this ordinal data right i'm going to convert this ordinal data into something like this 0 1 2 or something like this right some order i will give this is the way i'm going to transform my data from uh, from strings to numbers but if i do same thing here if i if i write let's say 0 1 2 3 4 or uh, five if it's five or four is that right then then i'm saying that uh i don't know, like inherently a uh, model will learn that i guess you know this metro is more important than bus uh if it is it important no like it's it's not important so in this case what we do is we create a one hot encoder in in what hot, one hot encoder what we do is uh, the categories number of categories we have like here we have five categories right cycle bike car bus metro so uh, 
what we do is we create let's say cycle bike car bus and metro we create five uh, columns out of it from one so uh, here i had only one column from one column i created five columns now uh, wherever uh, the me medium of transport is there right let's say some first row row one is there he is traveling through cycle then i will write cycle as one and i'll give bike as zero and other as zero all other will be zeros right It can write like row one something. And zero. If somebody is, is traveling through like uh, uh, you know uh, bus, like right? is traveling through bus, then I will give other else is zero values. Uh, I'll write zero, zero, uh, zero. And one and zero, right? Something like this. Okay. So uh, we need to check which are ordinal, which are nominal, which kind of data we have, right? So so let's see. Like uh, first, we'll see how many uh, how many categorical data is there, right? Categorical. Values. So so for numerical values, we do we don't need to worry about that, right? Except null values. Uh, if null values are there, we'll impute it using something mean, median, mode. But except that, we don't need to worry about that because uh, we need in ultimately we uh, for categorical data also we need to transform them to numerical data. So so let's see uh, what kind of categorical data we have. Uh, so I have like data. So the command is like select D types. What is D types first? I will I'll explain. So, so if I write data dot D types, I guess black it should be there. Okay. So if I write D types, uh, which you have, like you got here also, right? You got here also, like object, integer, integer object, something like that, right? So this D types is there. Right, it got object integer. So from uh, I want to select a D type, okay, and I will give which kind of D type I want. So so if I write number, then it is going to show me uh, the data which has like integer or float values, right? So so this you can see that there is no categorical data available here. It got like select it selected only numerical columns. This are large numerical column, but what I want is categorical data. So there is one command like by default. It's it's by default. Uh, this is the parameter include, right? And the parameter, if I write exclude, then it will exclude the numbers and it will show me whatever wherever the strings are there. So here locality is there, property is there, residential is there, and face is there, right? So uh, so here, like in property, I can see that single family is there, right? Single family. Let me uh, check how many unique values are there in property. If I write data, and I'll select property column, right? And I want to see how many unique values are there. So I'll write unique. Okay, so I got unique values like uh, this thing, like single family, two family, three family, and four family. So, I mean, uh, I can able to make sense that four family is greater than three family, is greater than two family, and it's greater than one family. So, if if uh, a house is there, which can able to accommodate it, let's say single family, uh, I know that that is going to cost less then if it is going to be able to accommodate four families. So if four family were able to live in that, then uh, I'm assuming that space is wider, though that's not true every time. 
but i'm assuming that this is my assumption right this so th this is what this is where eda comes in like this is i'm assuming is it true every time no uh, so uh, for our data set i'm assuming that this is true like uh, that i'm taking that four family uh, house is bigger than three family house and uh, two uh, then that is bigger than two family and one family right we also have this this thing like question mark right uh, that is like uh, i don't know something like right? that's what it's saying that i don't know and we usually call them like uh, unknown values right unknown values we have right so so if you have unknown values then you consider this unknown values as null values only right you you just transform them to null values just uh, that's how you do it so how how are you going to do it like i prefer pandas for doing it but you can do it with escalon also uh, so let me show you to how you how we can do it with pandas and uh, like for this problem we'll do it with escalon only okay uh, so i'll write data dot replace and i want to replace np dot nan uh, sorry i want to replace question mark with np dot nan so np dot nan means empty so uh it was there in property right in property there are some question marks for there but it got change uh, it got converted to nans I haven't stored this data anywhere. Like you can see that the changes were made, but it's not being stored, right? Stored. I didn't store them. So changes were made, but not stored, not saved, or which are you not saved? Okay. We'll we'll see how to do that with uh, you know imputation, and uh, we'll we'll try to build pipeline also. So for now, like uh, we know that th there is some order here. So so this is a ordinal column. Uh, residential, like we have detached house, duplex, detached house. Uh, so so again, I will see how many uniques are there in uh, that also data dot or see see you can write data dot and column name. Uh, so it was residential, and if I write unique. It will work, right? And but the problem is, if you if you if you write like this, for some reason, like it doesn't look, you know, uh, appealing. Like uh, I miss it sometimes that this is a this is a column name and not a any method or any function, right? So that's why I don't generally use it. But you but you can use it if if you like this way, you can write it. I what I usually do is I put brackets around it and uh, I give this, uh, you know, this way I, I usually write it. The same thing, right? It will show same thing, but this is the way, another way you can write it, but this is the way I, I always prefer. Here, I like detached houses that duplex, triplex, fourplex, okay? I, I, kind, I am kind of seeing a order here also, that detached house, duplex, triplex, fourplex, it, it, it has some order right so i will write that this two are ordinal values okay so so let me write ordinal columns or or where i was uh where i was yeah here right i will write that ordinal columns we have right property and residential okay now nominal uh what are, what others we have we have this date right date is not a uh, categorical or uh, it doesn't come into any categorical or numerical value it's date is in, in itself is a you know, different data type uh, uh, why is that because uh, we can't give dates to the model it will not understand the dates because it will consider dates as object so we 
what we usually try to do is we from the dates we try to take out some information like year months uh months and then you know we club them week like weekly data monthly data yearly data we take out some uh information like that from the dates and then we create new columns sorry uh, we create uh, some new columns out of it and then we give the new columns to our model to train the uh, train the model okay uh so uh what what else here? locality we have right now in locality like if i write like df dot locality or data locality dot unique Okay. So here, what we have is uh, the seven localities are there, like Waterbury, Bridgeport, Greenwich, Nor Norwalk. Then some null values are there. Okay, some null values are there which we need to impute. Fairfield, West, Hartford, and Stam Stamford. Like this kind of values are there. Uh, usually, what happens is in house locality has a matter like if you see some locality will have high higher prices than another locality but uh so the choice is you have the choice right you can choose it as ordinal as ordinal uh ordinal variable then then you need to figure out which one is more important right you need you need to see you have the data you you go here uh, you look that where the sell price is higher uh, in comparative to others uh, based on that you can make the judgment where property tax is let's say lower that that might be the better you know housing uh, area for selling uh, right or you can see uh, like carpet uh, you can make this uh, locality uh, related to with uh, like re like residential types right where the which kind of residential types are there which uh, are more important like uh, which kind of residences are more important you you need to make this all the eda and then come up with the uh, come up with that this is an ordinal variable but uh, you're not sure like uh, that uh, you'll say that uh, you know uh, i have like very less data i am not sure then you can make it as categorical also let's say if, I, if you make this as a category or nominal like you know, every area is same every locality is same you can say that it's your choice right so nominal uh variable right uh, now what we have uh, okay huh? so uh, face face is there yes any doubt uh so yes with respect to the date column um, yes how can we segregate is there any function that helps us to segregate yes, yes. With... yeah we, I'll, I'll i'm going there on the next next okay, is the so, oh, okay. so face we have now now see again with the face uh see in in like you know face uh like in india if you see there is something called like you know we do uh, vastu and then we uh, then that you uh, know priest uh, or like that he he will tell you that you know if a house is facing towards this direction that is more preferable uh, but again like if you see uh, in terms of like uh, reality or something like, all the faces are similar right north face north uh, east west north south like the probability of something is Kind of similar right so you can consider this also as a you know nominal variable or something like that so so i'll just choose this also as nominal so I, i'll choose locality and face as nominal variables uh where we was writing that we above yeah here okay so i chose this and face as my nominal values uh, with date uh, the only thing remain that uh, what we do with dates right 
uh, let, let's handle date time. How to handle this? So if I write uh, data and date dot d type, you know that it's object, right? So uh, let me let me show you the first first uh, uh, row, right? First row of date uh, column. Uh, the value is uh, two thousand nine zero one zero two. Right, this is the value of it. You can see the quotations are there, which determines that it's a string. Right, if I write a type of it, it's a string. Right, uh, so in pandas, uh, we have something called date time module. Right, uh, so we can convert strings to date time. So, so let's say if I have date uh, written like, let's say today's date, right? Uh, 0, 2, 0, 1, uh, 0, sorry, 1, 0. And I have 2, 0, 23. This is today's date, right? Today, and like today. Now I want to convert it to date and time. Then I can use uh, pandas module pd dot to date time. For a two date time, and if I give two day here, uh, the thing is, I need to give format also. Okay, how in which format I wrote? Like, uh, what format I use is uh, DD MM YYY, right? Like, like something like this. Like, uh, not this is not the format I'm going to write here. Like, if I write um, in terms of this, I use percent D. Then slash, I, I use slash, right? Then I write percent M. Or, so here we use like small d, small m. I use slash, then I use slash again. Then I use percent y. So this is the format in which I, uh, I wrote my date. Somebody can write date in like uh, you know tenth, then write he will write two, and then year. Then uh, somebody can write like this also uh, year, month, day. So there are like various formats in which dates were written, right? So for us, it's it, the uh, the format is this. So I'll use this format. Format is written as a as a string, right? So th let's say this is was this was given. So it got converted to a uh, timestamp. Now you can see the return uh, the return thing is timestamp. If you have uh, this, let me store it as uh, it's a time stem. I'm giving this today's timestamp, right? So from this, uh, we can extract, let's say, if I want year, I will write year. Right. Uh, I mean, see, for one for one date, uh, it doesn't make sense to you know use this much trouble and then get out here. But uh, when we have like 10,000 rows of, e of dates, then we uh, need all, the, all of this, right? Then I can write dot month. Uh, and if I write day, I'll get day also. Okay. So day is two, month is 10, and year is 2023. We can do something like week, day uh, also. Dot uh, be, you know, week. Okay, so week 40th, like, uh, so this currently uh, week 40th going on. So week 40th means in, in a year, like we have, we have like 52 weeks uh, and one day, like one more day will be there. If if, if the year is of 365 days, right? If, if a year of 365 days, 
then you will have like 52 weeks and one day so so you will sometimes you will see 53 week uh in in this thing right so 53 means the the another like one day right so the one day was given a 53 so we can see week number something like this so so this all data we can extract out of it so what else we can do you can go to pandas two date time and see what else we can get right so for our uh, purpose i will i will do is uh what i'll do is i i will first see which kind of format my data was in right that is the first as i will do so so now i have like year and uh, i'm not sure like is it's month or day i'm not i'm not sure so i'll just look for some other other data other dates also right but but i know see, see i know that if i if i write data dot tail i can i, I get that 392022 right so from this i was able to understand that the date given date is in like uh, y then so, so here we didn't use dash we, uh, sorry we didn't use slash but we use dash dash means this this one we use right here then we have month then we have day right so this is the format in which our dates were given so uh, i will convert this uh, data dot date dot to date time and i need to give format okay uh, the thing is see uh, what i what i did is pd dot to date time right but now i am writing data date dot to date time so so this is like a pd in here right a little bit of change of this function only but you can write in this way also and i will give my uh this thing format And if I write, if I run this, uh, series of series of has no two date time. P P D dot. Okay. Uh, so this is the only way it will work. Okay. Now I got. Uh, see. Uh, now you can see date D type here. D type is date time sixty four. Right. Earlier it was object. I we have converted all my dates into or date time format uh, date time data type but the thing is i haven't stored it in anywhere so i'd store it in my data frame only i'll store it right so if i write this then my original data frame will get changed and now it will have dates and uh, dates column with date time format right so data dot date this is how i get a date now i want to extract years from all the all the rows right years how how am i going to do it so see uh, if i write data dot date and if i write type of it if i type of it that's it's a series right so in series uh, if I write on series, if I write on series, give year from the series. This is what it means. Then it will throw it, it is going to throw me an error, right? From from this series, give me year. It doesn't make sense. So this is like this thing you, you need to remember. Like uh, uh, that why why should I write DD? Right? And that, that's how we'll get the years out of it. Okay. Same thing, uh, month and year, day, everything. Same, everything is same. Just you need to write DT in between. That's all. Month. 
right i got month of it so so how many months are there like which which month is, is there any month missing so i can see one nine i don't know when, uh, which months are there in between so let me write like df dot month dot i can write unique right i can write unique it will show me that uh, 1 to 12, all the months are there. All the months are available, right? And years, I also, I can, like from which year to which year I have the data. I want to see that. I'll write like dot unique. From 2009, like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, like there's no year missing in between. And I have data from 2009 to 2022 right same thing we can do with uh months and year also and like that so so see we can create new columns uh from date time right we can we can create new columns like let's say housing prices have you know some some months have higher higher chances of selling a house or you know buying a house we can really look that kind of uh, data from our data set right? from our data set we need to find out this kind of things but the thing is you need you need to ask questions otherwise like there is no uh, there is no eda without question you need to ask like if if your question is that uh, you know which in which month month my you know more houses getting sold getting so like more number or more amount that is also like more houses means what like more uh sell price or more count like more counts anything can be there right uh so this is the questions that you need to ask and you need to answer so this is the eda this is how we do eda right so uh, like this is uh this i'm i'm telling you but this is not you know if we deviate that much from the from our task then we will never reach what we need to do right so i will just go ahead and do what whatever we require to do okay uh, let's see uh what we have uh we can plot some graphs definitely like uh let's see uh let's plot some numerical graphs right so uh, which graphs you know you know which charts you know sir uh, seaborn and matplotlib both are used to uh, plot the graph so is there any difference or is there any advantage one over other uh, so so matplotlib is like uh, uh, you can plot everything with uh, matplotlib there is no uh, uh, there's no limitation that you know this kind of things you can't draw with matplotlib but you can do with uh, seaborn but seaborn is like uh, you know uh, visualization wise uh, seaborn gives better charts like coloring is there colors uh, much better colors easy command command is also easy in matplotlib you need to write everything uh, like like you can see you can say matplotlib is like c language and uh, seaborn is like python uh, commands are easier Okay, so there is no limitation in uh, Seaborn other than uh, yeah. anything. Both can do anything. Yeah, both can do anything. Like, not anything, but both can I do I mean, to say both can do each other's job. Yeah, both can do each other's job. Okay. okay so, okay, so which kind of charts you know? The histogram. Okay, histogram. Where where should we plot this? Like to check the frequency of the data. Okay, frequency of the data. So in a in a column. Yeah, in or a, a col or column. Yes. Col uh, frequency of a uh, of a feature. Okay, frequency of a feature. Let's see. So uh, frequency. Uh, then a scatter plot. Okay, scatter plot. Well, where we will use this also. Uh, 
check where is data points, how it is like uh, distribution of the data, if it is linear or this. Distribution of data. I mean to say, uh, on an axis we can check how it is distributed, like. Uh, no. if, it, if it is showing some trend, like if it is linear or if it is non-linear. So, uh, you're half correct. So, when we yes. want to see the relation between two columns. Yes, sir. Yes, correct. Between two features. Right. So, if you want to see see relation, then you will plot scatter plots. Then we have pie chart. Right. See, you can draw pie chart on numerical data. Uh, numerical means uh, continuous data. It should be categorical data, right? Categorical. On that, you can make pie charts. Then we have bar chart. Bar chart can give you count, can give you, you know, uh, usually it gives count, but you can uh, you can add it to like give some summation or something or something like that also, right? Uh, depends. So usually we we when we draw bar charts, uh, we take categorical data in account. Like for this category, uh, let's say this category is a plot account for that or something like that. Usually categorical. Then we have line chart. Line chart we usually draw when we have numerical, like continuous, continuous numerical, right? uh what others we have scatter plot pie chart histogram uh, is there anything i'm missing so for outliers we can try bo box plot yeah, yes sure box plot we can plot right outliers so when we plot blocks plots that means the data is numerical continuous numerical right Continuous uh, numerical uh, for categorical categorical data we can't plot box plot. So so like if if you have categorical data, then the, the choice is yours, right? Ultimately, that what you want to plot pie chart. If you want to plot box. Uh, sorry, uh, if you have categorical data, what you want like pie chart you want to draw or bar chart you want to draw. Or something like that, right? So it's your choice. The box plot can be drawn for the discrete one also, no? I so, think. For discrete one? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, for discrete uh, categorical. So, so box box plot can be drawn for uh, discrete data also, no? Yeah, discrete sir, continuous mean continuous or discrete. Uh, true. Well, discrete numerical, but it should be numerical. Yes, sir, that is. Okay. Line chart also you can do for continuous or discrete also you can plot like uh, there will be too much variation but you can do it. Uh, okay, so, so I'll just show you a few charts how to plot it. Uh, so let me take. And and one more thing, like uh, we plot is we we plot correlation, correlation heat map. This we plot. Uh, what it is, I uh, I'll come to that. Okay. So if you if you use pandas, then there's one simpler function like just df dot hist. If you write this data dot hist, and you can able to see all of the all of the like distribution histograms are there. This is all histograms, right? Uh, you can give like grid called false, I guess. Okay, so so this is like I know that uh, they are merging inside. You you need to give padding and something like that. Uh, but like this is the easiest way to plot a histogram. Okay. Uh, if I write, let's say, something like this, day, df dot year, okay, you, you get a like, better chart, uh, but as uh, individual chart. You can plot, uh, let's say if I import, 
import matplotlib dot pyplot spht port c1 sms then you can do like plt dot hist plot Yes. Yeah, hist only hist will work. Data and so ERM plotting. I'm getting this kind of data. Right. So so here is like discrete numerical. We can go. We can do it this with it. Uh, what else? Uh, numerical column we have. D types. Number dot columns. Let's say if I want to plot for number of rooms. Okay. This how I, so so this is like number of rooms. And this is a histogram, but uh, as you know, like uh, this this is like discrete uh, discrete uh, numerical plus like uh, the the gap is too much, right? Like three number of rooms are there in many houses, and compared to like four houses, five houses, and and there are like no houses lesser than three rooms, uh, which is kind of Sorry, need out. Okay, so so see uh, from this data, one thing I was able to you know think that th there is no house which has lesser than three rooms. Like like how how bad is data collection here, right? I can say something like this: like uh, there should be houses with two rooms, like right? two rooms. And uh, I'm not sure about like which locality is this. Like how how come there are like three number of rooms are more famous? Uh, but but is there like three number of rooms are maybe there? It's their status quo. The most of the people build houses with three rooms. But there should be houses right available which has two rooms. Like two rooms are uh, much more economically and uh, you know requirement require requirement wise also. A uh, good point. So, so from this graph, I can see that uh, this collection of data was not, you know, in a good way. There, there is some mistakes. So, so there is some biases there in our data. Okay. Uh, now, uh, now we can plot a few others like scatter plot. Let me plot scatter plot. Let's say P R T dot scatter. And I need to give two uh, two columns, right? Let's see if I give median income and selling, maybe selling price. Oops, I use different data. Can't we use one square bracket separated by comma? One square bracket? No, no. Uh, then uh, it, it will not know that which is x and which is y. Okay. So what I'm giving is like there are two variables, right? X and then y. So y axis and x axis. Right. 
so let's, so let's say if i if i take a number of rooms uh though this is not a good you know scattered plot like for scattered plot we usually think that both uh, should be you know continuous uh and numerical right Let, let's say let's say i will take carpet area and i will take cell price okay so this is how uh this graphs are coming up so we can see that more like there are more people uh, this kind of looking like a histogram but this is scatter plot uh, so there is no like a relation or uh, there is no uh, relation i can see from uh, carpet area to selling price right like here selling price is uh, even though uh, selling price is higher here the carpet area is less right uh, maybe locality is making a difference here or uh, something like this right uh, okay then we can plot like pie chart let's say if i take df and data okay for data let me take one categorical column dot plot and i can write kind equal to pi uh, not supported str or and integer okay supported this oh okay let's see see uh you don't need to remember uh this uh methods for drawing pie charts okay because this is not a uh important uh step see uh important step means if you uh this is all for inferences so getting the information about our data that's why we use this plots this is not a like necessary requirement for our machine learning model to get trained right for machine learning model to get trained we need to do like the necessary steps will be like uh i'll write necessary steps for this you you should you know remember commands like my methods and all uh, how to drop null values okay. this isn't necessary convert category to uh, category to uh, numerical okay. so so i wrote drop drop null values along with that uh, one thing is impute null values impute null values then uh, categorical to numerical conversion is there okay so categorical numerical conversion requires like one hot encoder Hot and encoder and ordinal encoder, right? Now, now let's say if we get like label label as a category, then we'll use label encoder. Label encoder will use. Okay. 
uh, other than that uh, other than that I guess other than that, there is no like necessary steps like dropping null values, imputing them. Imputing is also, a, you know, you know, it's a very task. Like it's, in itself, it's a task. Like what kind of imputation you want to do? Like you want to, you know, uh, replace null value with mean or median or mode or some constant, or you want to do like like we did like. F fill is there, right? Something like that. Fill, B fill, interpolate. So all things are there in, in like, you no know, imputing null values. Dropping null values is okay, and uh, and then you should know like how to you not know, drop rows and columns, or I will write off columns based on a certain conditions if you know these things then that is like more than enough the plotting is not enough like not a uh, plotting to remember plotting is not uh, required okay so how it's plotting pie chart uh df dot plot dot pi okay dot what was i writing do locality drop drop any plot plot file is there something missing there uh, let me take residentials let, let me take residential residential or face Not supported. Strong. Student data. Okay. Data dot is null. Dot sum. Okay. So this has this doesn't have any missing value. Still. Put in table to it. Maybe uh, I need to convert it to numbers. Then it will work, right? Uh, let's say let's say if I choose number of rooms. Uh, number of room is like Okay. Okay. I guess it will get plotted. We'll uh, we'll move ahead. So so like till here, uh, we're able to do it. We were able to plot some graphs. Uh, we were able to get some some information out of it also. Like, like uh, there is no correlation between you know uh, carpet area and cell price, right? And then like why there is no rooms less than three, which is kind of uh, you know I think some some mistakes is there in collecting the samples. Then we have like years. Years is okay. Like year is not a you know important column uh, in terms of graph right for years like we usually do we take them as like some some you know we consider it with something like we try to match year with something then we try to get data out of it right uh, get information out of it 
okay so this is a pie chart of uh, why why is it like this uh, df dot tape unique okay so we have like four categories only uh what's making it mass earth why is this okay, uh, okay like uh we'll skip this like how to do a pie chart but this how like you you should plot pie chart so there's some some something is there happening I, I need to if i start checking it then it will take more amount of time okay uh so what are those chart we have i guess you can plot them now so you can plot like a uh, bar chart line chart okay box plot uh i'll, I'll draw box plot and correlation okay so for correlation uh first first let me draw for correlation Correlational plot. I will write uh, data dot core. Okay. And usually, what happens is we we select a method. See, see, you can see method here. There are like three correlation methods: are the Pearson, Candle, and Spearman. Uh, this is standard correlation coefficient. If you don't write anything by default, it's Pearson, right? By default, it's Pearson, but I will just write it so that we know that we are using Pearson correlation. Like, uh, if I run this, then uh, this one warning will get like use numerical only or something like this because we can find a uh, correlation between numerical features only we can't find a correlation between numerical and categorical so 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 if you have if you see any like uh, this uh, column right which is already being uh, transformed to numerical and then you start looking for correlation still like like it won't work like the correlation will be very poor right uh, so so we usually don't look correlation between two a categorical and numerical we only look correlation between two numericals right mm. Some matter, okay. Numeric, like numeric. So now we have this thing. Uh, but the thing is, like uh, you can see, uh, like this has year has highest correlation with year. That is, that is going to always correct, right? With itself, it's going to be always higher, right? Uh, we can see that uh, sell price and estimated value has like very high correlation positive high correlation and this number of rooms and number of bathrooms also have some some kind of correlation with them right number of rooms and carpet area uh, also has some correlation right so if you have no more number of room then uh, you need more carpet area also uh, right because each room will have area so so it's true like we can see this but but the visualizing this is not that uh, efficient so so what we use is sns dot heat map there is something called heat map okay in that so i'll store this data correlation in a variable name uh, core like correlation okay and i give uh, this here sms dot heat map uh, okay so this is the heat map i got like uh, so uh, if, if you see a lighter color like uh, this this lighter color or this kind of things then there is the very high 
correlation like positive correlation so currently like we don't have negative highly negative correlated values like uh, very few are there so so we are not able to see uh, this like lower than 0, 0 otherwise it would be in minus also negative things so it depends on the values but currently we have mostly positive or nearer to zero so this kind of uh, this uh, you know legion or this coming up okay so uh, currently i can't see which these values are here but i can't see inside this right for this uh, there is one thing called anode if i write anode equal to anode equal to true then it will show uh, values also so so you can see that like year versus year 1 then year versus estimate value 0 0.021 uh, versus sell price 0. Uh, 0.01 year versus sell price it should be 0. 0.01 how come it's going different same thing i'm plotting there okay uh Wait, 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 it was correct. Like number of rooms. So sorry. <laughs> I got confused. Like this is a year, then then we have like estimate value. Then we have this is for sell price, this is for number of rooms, this is for number of bathrooms, then carpet area, then property tax, right? So so against year, you can see this all have, have very very low correlation. But year year is a like uh it's not a good, you know, it's not continuous variable, right? We have continually like sell sell values there, right? uh, sorry estimated value sell price then carpet area is also continuous so, so if you have this kind of data continuous kind of data then you will have much higher you know you you can relate correlation in between them like whenever you see correlation uh always remember that correlation always we try to find correlation when like continuous numerical values are there if, if if like discrete values are also there then then so like you'll get some correlation right see correlation we got uh that is not a problem but it doesn't make sense like uh, in statistical terms it doesn't make sense we should have the continuous numerical values to to get this thing okay correlation uh we have estimate value and which has high correlation with uh, the cell price I zoom down a bit. Now it's visible. Okay. So uh, okay. So we can see that uh, this estimate value and uh, sell price has some higher correlation, right? So when we make regression, what we do is when we solve regression problem, we kind of choose uh, choose columns. So we choose columns uh, which has a lower correlation correlation or choose features if I write features which has lower correlation in each other like in each other but have higher correlation in each other like not but but see higher correlation correlation with target target is uh, is required like is requ not required is uh, uh, is uh, like it's not mandatory required but it's uh, is like if it's good uh, if if there is higher correlation between feature and a target then that's a like a good thing okay so then we choose that columns so this is like uh if you if you study like uh, if, you, if you read that assumption of linear regression then yeah you'll come up with this thing right so so here we can see that uh, with sell price is our target 
estimated value has higher correlation. So we'll keep this column. Okay, we'll not drop this column. Uh, then, uh, then we have other columns that is not that that much important or that much correlated with sell price. Okay. Uh, now let's say number of bathrooms and number of rooms, right? These two are correlated. Like zero point seven four is also higher correlation. Okay, number of rooms and number of bathrooms are highly correlated. Okay, number number of bathrooms, number of okay. So uh, we can drop either one column. Okay, we can remove number of bathrooms while computing our linear regression. Like uh, uh, feature selection, right? This comes under like feature selection. Which column we want to keep? Which column we don't want to keep? You can choose directly here that I don't want to keep number of rooms or number of bathrooms. Any any one, uh, which are you choose? Okay. Same thing like carpet area and uh, number of bathrooms also have higher correlation and Carpet area and number of rooms also has higher correlation. So we can remove carpet area also. We can remove number of bathroom also, right? So you know that that the dimensions uh, means number of columns as reduces, our model become much better, right? Our model uh, try uh, predicts much better. And if you uh, compute adjusted R square, it will come much much higher if you have less amount of columns, right? So, so we can actually drop them, but uh, like we already, uh, it's your choice. Like keep them, build a model, then check. Then if, if it's showing, showing not much uh, a good result, you can come again, remove these two columns, and then again build a model. Okay, that's the, that's how we usually go ahead. But but I know that from this, I I uh, the information I got from heat map is which has higher correlation and uh, uh, which is higher lower correlation right and like lower correlation or correlation then like positive correlation negative correlation right this is also important they're positively correlated or negative so you here we have most of them are positive correlated but it can be negative also Uh, then uh, box plot. Okay, we will just draw box plot. So let me plot let df. Let's say sell price. Sell then price dot plot kind equal to box again again yeah, so we can see that okay the thing we are seeing is that uh, the the axis right y axis okay uh, how to make it like uh, root equal to Make um, box plot to find us. this read by extra return tab layout and. Do we have that? Let me plot. Let's then start box plot and see data equal to data and x equals. Okay. So okay, so this is how my box plot looks like. So see, currently the axis is like if you see 
e to the power 7 okay uh, as we know from the, our data and we can see that most of the data is uh, here only like size Uh, if I increase much. Okay, so you can see that most of the data of uh, sell price is comprising here, like most of the things are here only in small area, right? And uh, like the like outliers are there, many outliers are there out of 10,000, okay? Uh, because uh, you know, sell price, like selling price is dependent on uh, many things right like locality then uh, uh, depends on uh, how many rooms are there uh, how many other things are there so so it doesn't know how how many rooms are there and everything right what how a box plot is getting computed like it compute median then q1 q3 and uh, and and that's how like q3 plus 1.5 time iqr that's how we plot this uh, viscous Right, so so this that way we build the box plot, but box plot doesn't know that uh, sell price is dependent on other variables, right? And that's why it's it's getting too many outliers and all. But uh, but we know that there are many outliers. Okay. When when it comes to like uh, salary, money, income, or something like this, you will always uh, find these outliers, uh, many outliers in that that kind of data. Okay, uh, so this is how you plot box plot. Okay, uh, we have now uh, we we need to create test set and trend set. Okay, uh, I guess we can you know uh, do this in uh, next class. Like on Friday, we'll do all the other steps. Right, few steps are remain. Uh, we'll do that. Okay. I need to talk. Uh, okay. Share the link of collab. Yeah, sure. I need to give access also. link okay we can continue with in next class we'll we'll follow we'll do from trend test bit okay. i'll not cover all of this like random sampling stratified sampling i'll i'll not cover that but uh uh we'll we'll cover that in like in other other uh, you know sessions Okay. Uh, otherwise, we can. If you, if anybody have doubt, I can take it, or others we can drop up. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Today's session was really nice. Yeah, thank you. A lot you. of clarity, uh, but still, once we work on it, we'll know exactly, you know, where we face difficulties. Whenever Correct. you're teaching, we feel that we know, but when we do it by ourselves. Uh, that is when we'll know how well we've understood it. Yes, true, true. So for this is like programming uh, course, right? So uh, more uh, we we demand that uh, you should you know practice more uh, because we can't teach programming. Programming can be learned only. Yes, sir, true. Okay. Uh, you, sir. If there is no doubt, then we can drop off. Uh, bye, bye. So when would be the next session again? You will Friday. be taking. Yeah, I will be taking that Friday. Okay, Six so minutes. Sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, bye, everyone. Oh yeah. Thank you, sir. Take care.
sir? Yes. I had 